All right, I'm really enjoying this, so I'm just going to jump into another one. Um, the one that I'm looking at is called Containerizing Your Thoughts. Super intriguing title. I don't know where you're going with it. Um, and I will refrain from projecting uh, what you want, what you're going to say, and just let you let you talk. If I have, if I, if there's things that I am thinking about right now that you don't address, I'll add them at the end. Hey friends, today's video I want to talk about containerization, and I'm, uh, I guess you could talk, you could describe it as chunking, right? So it's not a new concept, but I like the phrase containerization, and it comes from the book The Box, which is about container shipping and how you know in the past shipping used to be they just put all the goods mm. on a ship which was this, like all kinds of I think they call it break bulk mm. whatever it's just all kinds of nonsense right just unstandardized uh, stuff they to carry into onto the ship and off the ship and so there were longshoremen whose jobs were to carry stuff on and off the ship and this would happen at every ship at every port all over the world and it was very tedious and costly and stuff would go missing that kind of thing and then around World War II they invented um containers, shipping containers, standardized shipping containers and that tremendously reduced the cost of shipping because now you just move the containers onto the ship and off the ship and you know you can use cranes for that, you can put the container directly on a truck or a train and it's just everything becomes simpler and I remember when you know so I used to write in a blog and I still blog, but like at some, at some point, my Twitter started to take off and I started tweeting more and more. And it occurred to me that one of the things that I enjoyed about Twitter is that tweets are like containerized thoughts, right? There is a form, a frame, right? Uh, back then it was 140 characters, now it's 280 characters, but there's a limit to how much you can put in each tweet. And this is a constraint that's actually very useful in a sense because it creates this containerized and they're very easy to ship, or ship around so to speak right like container boxes just link people to your tweets or retweet them or subtweet them yeah you can't really do that with blog posts not at all context right it's just this 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 format that you operate in and it's like haikus are a kind of container sonnets are a kind of container by by keeping the form fixed you you kind of free yourself to experiment within the form without raising questions about you know the the choice of the framing choice right so which is an interesting thing to think about in relation to my previous video about against excessive homoge homogenization because Homogenizing some amount of your form allows you to play with your content, with your with the material in it, pretty well. And anyway, I, I was thinking about containerization today, not because of tweets, but because of time. Like just kind of, I'm thinking about the days and weeks and months and years of my life and what I've done every month and so on. I started a thread last year in. I think January of last year, where every month at the end of the month, I would tweet whatever I remember doing that month, right? And Twitter, again, there's 280 characters. They allow you to put four pictures in it. And so I try to pick four pictures that I think are most evocative, that, that remind me of, of whatever's going on. And I try to pick seven or eight things that were memorable, interesting. And so as a result, I can go back and see what I did in any month of 2020. And again, it's not perfect, but it's a pretty high resolution image. I started doing this every day, which is saying like what today's weather was and what moods I experienced today with emojis. And I've only done it for like five days or something, but I'm experiencing some some benefits like you're describing already. A, a, a model of each month that can also sometimes help me, you know, when I look at it, I remember other things that I had not included in the tweet, just kind of by association. And I wish that I had 12 tweets for every year of my life, but I don't. I mean, I, I do have old tweets that I can kind of, 
dig through the old blog posts and stuff, I can as- retrospectively, retroactively analyze and assemble what happened in my life back then. And I might do that, I think, at some point. I- I've been thinking recently that once I'm done with the book that I'm currently working on, I want to do like a personal history project. And I've attempted several personal history projects over the years and they all kind of I started and then it kind of spiraled out of control a little bit and then I just stopped and it's also really intense to read your old stuff I, I'm assuming that the video I'm listening to right now comes after the videos you made about reading through like a good portion of the you know, one million words published online that's an emotionally heavy thing to do you know, I've done it a few times myself you really gotta pace yourself. It is still useful that I started those times because now I can reference that material and kind of um, tinker with it, tweak it, pull stuff from it, reshape it. And it, you know, no work is ever wasted. All of it is relevant to what I'm trying to do. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to assemble a sort of easy to navigate personal history. And it's also so it's like things that I did and it's also things that happened in the world around me and, and just I want to be able to navigate my life and navigate my history mm. in a very skillful, fluid way. Yeah. And I think there's something very powerful about that. I think there's something very interesting about it. Like it just makes life feel richer and more nuanced. Like there's more going on. And um, yeah, so I guess I wanted to make this video mainly as an affirmation to myself that I want to continue to containerize my life. And again, these containers, so how does this square with excessive homogenization? I just noticed that in quite a few of the videos of yours I've listened to, you end up saying something to that effect of like, maybe this is just (laughs) to make the point to myself or maybe to motivate myself to do or remember XYZ. And hey, I think that's not like you need me to say this, I'm not saying it for you, but it's a great reason to make the videos. It's not everything, right? So it's it's really, it's like um, the containerized tweets are a, a, an aid, like a navigational aid or like a map, but the map is not the territory, right? And I don't intend to live my life in containers, but rather I containerize some thoughts so that I can access them easily and, and make sense of things easily and then I can get back to my life. Um, yeah, and you know, I'm thinking every you know every word. I can get pretty movie about this, but like every word is a containerized concept, right? Or idea, or just a, a bundle of associations. And every sentence is a kind of container. Every paragraph is a container of sentences, and every chapter in a book is a container of paragraphs. Every book is a container of chapters. Every library is a container of books. Right, and um, yeah, I'm just getting a lot of value right now from reflecting again on how my life is okay. structured and what areas are unstructured in a way that is unhelpful. You know, so I I don't like calendars and schedules, but I have like childhood <laughs> trauma from that stuff, and uh, yeah. but. I think I have kind of um, avoided them too much, too long, and as a result, you know, if you, one of my old riffs that I used to play with that I kind of abandoned for a while, but now I'm returning to is, um, if you don't have a, a schedule, or if you don't have, you know, if you don't deliberately make your choices, then your choices will be made for you, or like, you know, it, if, when you choose not to choose, like whatever out if you don't have good habits then like whatever else you're doing that typically becomes habitual nobody's really good at being completely random all the time right like you you if you don't design your routine you end up having a routine that is designed by your impulses and by your just knee-jerk things no plan reactionary and your reactive stuff is is a function of like your biology or your yeah it depends on how reactive you are in general how ruled you are by your impulses in general but I see your point. Whatever, you know, things beyond your conscious control. And I am trying to be more explicit about my life. And I'm trying to 
I don't like how many of my days have been just blurry, blurry kind of. I don't know why I did that day. Uh, I was on Twitter for a while. I get for, I, was, I was on Twitter for most of it, yeah. which is not a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing that I spend a lot of time on Twitter. I think it's a bad thing if I spend a lot of time on Twitter and I don't know what I did that day. Even if I did stuff, you know, it's it, like it's tragic because sometimes I do a bunch of work that will only realize its value much later on. But in the moment, I don't feel good and I feel bad when I'm trying to go to bed and I can't sleep because I feel like I didn't do any work. And the reason I feel that I didn't do any work is not that I didn't do any work, but it's that I didn't contextualize the work that I did and kind of present it to myself. And you know, this is what people do in, in, in organizations, right? In companies, you have all-hands meetings and you have monthly stand-ups or whatever. You, have, you present your work to each other. And I am learning that it's also valuable to present your work to yourself. It's valuable to, to, to structure your narrative, to, to remind yourself of the work that you're doing. Especially if, you know, I've said, I recently made a video about failure, and it's like... Sorry, real quick, just an idea that came to me. is like, you could obviously do this on Twitter too, but I like to do uh, and make audio journals. And you could even do that in video. You could make, I mean part of your YouTube channel or an entire YouTube channel of its own where you just check in, you know, at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day as if it were like a stand-up call at work but just with you and yourself um, to, to see what you've been up to, what you're working on. I think that'd be... Eh, huh. I'm going to consider doing that. If you're constantly failing, it's going to feel like shit. Unless you know what the failure is in service of, right? What you're working towards. And you want to measure your progress towards the thing that you're working towards. Even if the thing that you're working towards is not necessarily the final goal, and if progress is non-linear or whatever, like even if it's just, I spent an hour working on my book today. An hour a day working on your book feels less... Um, you know, that, that way when there's no progress, no tangible progress being made of it, at the end of it, I can at least go to bed knowing that I tried, right? And maybe there's a way to solve this kind of discomfort by... I, you haven't said this, but I, I imagine it's on your mind, but like doing that, um, checking in or whatever, it's that is creating the container, right? It's like if, you, if your day is an open box and you've filled it with stuff... It's like at the end of the day, checking in is like closing the box. They're like, okay, nope, I, you know, I finished that tweet. I hit send on that tweet. It's not a draft anymore. I'm not working on that anymore. I can come back to it later, but it's it's done. The boundaries are set around it. Being okay with not doing anything, and so so like you can always there are many. It, many levels at which you can try to solve a problem, but uh, if if I, I don't think I'm going to be able to solve that soon. So and I would like to be able to solve this. You know, so it's like you can build your capacity to solve the problem in any any different part of the problem. And you know, I have time right, in life. I can I can solve this first and then figure out how to solve that. And even if the other way around may be potentially better, I I I think doing the immediate thing makes more sense for me right now. Maybe I'm wrong, and if I'm wrong, I'll figure I'll figure it out later on at some point. Right. Let me know what it's like for you. How do you how do you guys kind of uh, structure your lives? <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> Done. Cool. Um, hmm. I don't know if I'm gonna try to answer that last question. Besides, maybe what I'll say is that one, I relate a lot to in the past and even now. <laughs> having many days where I'll do a lot of stuff but I won't really know what the fuck I've done um, you know so, uh, a lot of those days were on days shitty days at work where I then I just was on Twitter as a way to sort of distract myself those days just kind of become ma major blurs uh, and yeah and the feeling pretty fatigued and shitty at the end of them. Um, but nowadays, I would say <coughs> I am I, I am actively working on that whole what I forget the term used for it, but like personal history, like really diving into that and 
diving into it with an eye to look at particular parts of my life, particular types of areas and re recurring issues that I encounter with them. You know, for example, with work, for example, with money, for example, with uh, marketing. Those are the big ones. I mean, you know, relationships as well, you know, romantic stuff. But, um, but yeah, to really like dive into those deeply, look at what the recurring patterns are, what the recurring emotional um, issues are, whatever word you want to use, blocks, patterns, um, and and working on, uh, you know, to use the language of internal family systems, for example. Uh, getting to know, like, what were the protector parts of me in those scenarios, and what were the exiles, you know? What, what, are, the, what are the pains and fears and angers that I was experiencing that my behaviors were being shaped by? And um, to work on on unburdening some of those pains and some of those fears so that my habits aren't defined by attempting to um, just avoid things that make me feel pain and fear and anger and sadness, you know, so that I am not so reactive and so that I am, that I can choose um, more spontaneously what I want to be doing with my time and with my energy. So that's what I'm working on now. And uh, it's a long process, it takes patience. And uh, I'm hardly at the end of it. I'd say I'm only at the very beginning of it, but it seems to be working. I'm starting to get way more energy back than I've had in a long time, many years. Much more motivation, much more excitement about what kinds of things I want to do and I am able to just like choose what I want to work on with much more or with much less internal friction than ever before so yeah that would be how I answer and and I'll end it there talk to you in the next one